Hello and welcome to the Xenothesis podcast. Uh, this episode, episode 39, we're talking about chapters 16 and 17 from part 2 Phoenix of book 2 Adulthood Rights of the Xenogenesis Trilogy by Octavia E. Butler. I am Richard Acton and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host. Michael E. Glinka. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> the emphasis on EY. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Uh, I've, I've, it, it's often written Octavia E. Butler. What's um, her actual for some name? Reason. Uh, I have forgotten. Um, I will have to look it up. <laughs> and great start to the episode. With the <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for picking up. I was just thinking about the, that we're almost finished up our, with the part two. Like we still ha- we only have a few chapters left and it's done. Mm-hmm. I think this is one of the largest sections of the book, though, um, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, yeah, uh, I think yeah, so. The- uh, isn't it like the largest section from all of the books? Yeah, I think you said it before to me. I believe I may have done, yes. Uh, I I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head now. But yeah, this has been quite a long section because I've been saying part two Phoenix for quite a while now. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, next one is part three Chikachitak, which is much harder to say. Yeah, and you're going to have to say it every episode. Nice. Looking forward to it. Yeah, uh, we'll see how that goes. (laughs) <laughs> but uh, yeah, shall we uh, shall we get started properly? Let's um, talk about your predictions for chapter sixteen. Absolutely. So um, in my chapter sixteen predictions, I thought that uh, oh, spe- speaking of Nessie, uh, that's the pro- correct pronunciation. I checked online. Um, okay. In several ways, and then it's Nessie. Mm-hmm. I hope I'm correct. But I, from what I saw, like it's Nessie. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I, mean, the, I think the the audio book does it yet another way that I can't remember. Really, it's not Neki or Nessie, but it's something else. So. <laughs> Nisai or something. Like that? Uh, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Apparently, it's a, a difficult one to figure out how to pronounce. Well, I will. St- well, everyone, before I got predictions, the name is gonna change every episode. So. Yeah, we'll try and do all the possible ways to you know, <laughs> maximize the number of people who we can piss off by doing it wrong. <laughs> Absolutely. So my prediction was that Nessie is definitely try, uh, definitely is going to try to do something, to, and the gr- girls will try to escape to prevent being hurt by her. Um, I'm in chapter early <laughs> with that prediction. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, the, but uh, I think yeah, you you were kind of in the in the very much in the right direction there. But we just needed to do a little bit of scene setting in the uh, um like scrap area that they're recovering before we moved on to to that. To be fair, like I was thinking that she might be do she might do it before they reach the salvage site, so that you know like um hmm. when there's less people. But then again. Most people that were in the group were against her anyway, so that didn't make yeah. any sense. It, it seems like she's actually um, trying to recruit some people from the the salvage site to yeah. uh, to help out with this, uh, given that she was uh, in a, a bit of a minority before she arrived there. Honestly, hmm. but anyway, let's get uh, let's get to it. I guess chapter sixteen mm-hmm. summary. Mm-hmm. The group has reached the salvage site that was in fact a buried town. Um, Akin was told by Gabriel that it was smashed and covered by the Onkali so that humans wouldn't remember living here or what the city was or what the origins of that particular uh, place was. But the truth is, Akin knew what actually happened. The town wasn't smashed. A shuttle, a small ship-like entity, landed and fed on everything that it could. Um, it could even devour the soil. So what people of Phoenix were actually digging through were just its leftovers or waste, I would say. Mm. So when the group reached the area, um, a number of men and women started coming out from, like, you know, dirty men from work, stopping the work, clustering around them, shouting and greeting each other until they saw the children. So they're like, oh. When they did, they were like, oh, let's be quiet. And then they all tried to baby talk to all three of them. But Gabe mm. warned them that, uh, you know, they should stop that. They, you know, they can, they can probably speak. That's, uh, you don't have to do that. And um, one of the women asked Gabe if Akino was one of theirs. But Gabe told her that he was, in fact, a construct. He's not a bad kid, though. Um, at first, you know, it was the first compliment from mm. Gabe uh, to Ak- for Akin. Yeah, that's an an interesting little, uh, uh, a nice little sort of small note to indicate that Gabe is warming up a little bit to yeah. Akeen. 
yeah, I think mm. Tate's plan to push uh, Akin onto Gabe has started working. Mm. Um, the salvager picked Akin and took him away to show him something that potentially was a truck uh, um, or a lorry uh, for mm. those in the UK. On the way, Akin saw the scavengers remove the wild vegetations to plant crops in the area that they were living. Um, anyone who saw Akin thought he was beautiful, no tentacles, very human-like. Everyone was f- feeding him, obviously, which made him happy, but also touched mm. and petted him, which made him not so happy, uh, mm. obviously because of his sensitive skin. Yeah, that's an interesting little sort of uh, phenomenon that they're, they're all kind of commenting on how human he is. It's, uh... it's interesting. I wonder if, like, Nikanj uh, planned this, like, you know, making the first boy born of a Onkalian human trade uh, to be as human as possible because of course we don't know how he will look like after the um metamorphosis mm-hmm. um but yeah, it's, a, it's a good point point. and yeah we did kind of speculate in the last chapter about how much of the um how much of akin being among the humans was was a plan uh, in, the, yes, in the first yes. place maybe this yeah. is also part of a plan maybe you know nikan just playing chess with three thousand steps ahead of everyone uh, you know Moriarty versus Sherlock, like, but this time we have both of them combined in one entity. Yeah, I wouldn't put it past the the Uloi. They they always seem to have a long plan. Yeah. But yeah, do we have a description of a place a bit more uh, like of the place that Akin was seeing at the time? So they passed a small trench where a small stream was flowing. Um, also in the book mentioned that it sometimes it looked like it could overflow if there was a um, particularly wet season. And as they were walking, mm. Akin saw snow-covered peaks of mountains. He merely shouted to the uh, the salvager who was holding him, Sabina, the name of the salvager, to show him the mountains. She was happy to mm. explain to him that those were volcanoes and that, that when one of them exploded, there was some ground shaking. But not much more than that. Um, but they could see the explosion and sometimes the lava flowing down the side of it. Yeah, well, that's reassuring. Yeah. I mean, you know, like when they're like, oh, ah, you know, just a bit of a volcano explosion. That, that's fine. Um, yeah. Well, that's what they thought in Pompeii. That went well. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um to be fair, I wonder if there's any nerd out there who was reading those books and who would try to triangulate the area where the potentially all this story was taking place. Hmm, actually, yeah, that's a good point. I had the same thought when, when they said volcano. I was like, I wonder where there are volcanoes in, in South America where this might be uh, <laughs> a close... <laughs> I didn't actually look it up, but uh, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> I'm sure there's somebody who would wanted to, like, they would triangulate the area and be like yes this is where it is and to give us the latitude and longitude um i I mean i don't know if we have enough to be that specific but i mean uh, you know who knows who knows no um akin and sabina uh continued towards a short row of houses where the salvages lived there was a flattened rectangular metal frame that used to be a truck she said to him that she always wondered how they don't kali smash it that the way the fl- uh, you know how flat it was the way it was akin said nothing to that learning that people didn't actually want him to give information unless he was asked directly um and anything about onka mm. tended to frighten them which is a weird uh, i mean i get it but at the same time maybe because i'm too curious i'll be like give me everything like you know give me all the, everything yeah. you know i mean it's a, like know thine enemy kind of a situation yeah right? like if you're going to be the resistors you want to know how they work uh, which is really weird right because you you would want to know mm. as much as possible but who knows mm. um akin then noticed a building where salvages were going into and found that it was a museum there were all sorts of things in there. Stacks of dishes, jewelry, glass, metal. I can saw c- crosses with statues of Christ on them and some paintings uh, depicting of, you know, the um, religious um, sto- uh, stories mm. around as well. Um, Tate, who happened to reach the building before I can hand him a picture of a lenticular painti- painting of a Christ that was moving his arms depending on the angle Aquino was looking at. Um... This this is a strange religious artifact to me. <laughs> to be fair, Richard, the, like coming from Poland, and whenever like I went, to, like there was uh, you know those um, Lent 
uh, little markets mm-hmm. in front of the the church. Like you could find mm. weird stuff like this all over the place. Yeah, I, I've seen also it's like similar stuff from from like Mexico and other Central American countries, and and I, yeah, there's that, just <laughs> there's some very strange kind of little uh, like you know Jesus trinkets that yeah exist out there in the world. It's like. But the fact okay, that it was like, like a, a the, lenticular the, painting where yeah, he's moving his arms. Yeah, it's like uh, opening his arms. It's just like grave. You could make Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, sorry okay. apologies for uh, hurting people's um, religious feelings. But yeah, that's what I had the image of in the moment that he mentioned it was like a lenticular painting. Uh, it's just it's a strange juxtaposition of this kind of like. Uh, almost comic modern medium and this like serious subject it's i know a, right uh, yeah <laughs> like it's such a weird thing yeah. um but this is where we get something interesting on like on the uh of uh, well in the story akin then tasted it and then threw away heart feeling disgusted and nauseated a man who saw that got angry about throwing it and you know giving this to a child but Tate and sabina immediately stepped towards akin to find out what was wrong as they were doing, Akin was already running outside to spit out with pure pain going through his body. By the time he could talk, he had everyone's attention to his uh, to his uh, hmm. unhappiness. To be, uh... Akin apologized to Tate and asking if the pictures broke that she, you know, but she was more concerned about his well-being than the picture. Akin, hmm. in response, told her that he got poisoned by the picture that the plastic, as Tate told him about it was, was harmful. Um, Akin told her to tell the girls not to taste it, but to his surprise, they were already behind him the moment he said it. And so he told them, Nonkali, that he will share his experience with them. And there's a bit of mm-hmm. excerpt from, uh, from the book. It was more poison packed tight together in one place than I've ever known. Did humans make it in that way on purpose? It just worked out that way, Gabe said. Hell, maybe that's why the stuff is still here. Maybe it's so poisonous or so useless that's not even the microbes could eat it. Non-biodegradable, I think the pre-war world was. Um, hmm. Akin looked at Gabe sharply. The shuttle must have not eaten the plastic then, and the shuttle could eat anything. Maybe the plastic and the truck were not uh, overlooked, but purposely ignored by the ship not to poison itself. Some women, uh, some women mm. said that the pre-war plastic used to kill people, especially when the poison leached into food or when it burned and choked people. Um, Sabina got concerned if they should trade it, but Tate told her that the only place it would cause serious problems was the dig site, due to the amount of it around. Akin mm. asked then the humans uh, why they used it so much if it killed them. And this is another excerpt from the book. Um, most of them didn't know how dangerous it was, Gabe said. As, and some of the ones who did know were making so damn much money selling the stuff to uh, they, to worry about fire and contamination that might or might not happen. Um, he made a wordless sound, almost a laugh, although Akin could detect no humor in it. That's what humans are, too, don't forget. People who poison each other, then disclaim all responsibility. In a way, that's how the war happened. It's interesting, right? Because... Mm, yeah, some more uh, more commentary. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, because, I mean, technically, plastic is supposed to be inert, right? That's the whole purpose why we're using it, because it's supposed to be so... Dur- uh, mostly. Yeah, mostly, like, mm. durable and also inert, and that's why we can store it, a lot of things in it. But, of course, it's not entirely true because some of the plastics old plastics particularly release the um particles that are toxic and we know that because there's been a lot of studies saying that there's an increasing number of plastics my uh, um molecules in the food and in the soil i mean there's a it's kind of two whole different classes of problem there right there's the microplastic mm. particles thing yes. which is you know little pieces of plastic that uh, come off and and uh you know, can't be degraded and get stuck in stuff and yes. then there's the um the kind of leaching of chemicals used in the um Production. construction of the plastic so yep. like plasticizers or thermal stabilizers you know stuff that's used yep. to to um, stop it from melting and stuff like that um and you know, some of those are pretty nasty, but for the most part, um, they're pretty well contained in the plastic. Burning it, though, very bad idea, right? That releases all kinds of unpleasant, nasty, toxic stuff. Yes. But for the like for the most part, the plastic in in normal use is inert, and if any of the stuff that's in it is leaching out, it's doing so in very tiny quantities. So the uh, like it, it's not something that's an acute toxicity problem. Like if that was the case, then like clearly it would be much more 
like noticeable and people would be you yeah know, there would be more evidence and people would be more ha- angry about it yeah exactly right yeah that would be pretty clear right um but uh, where it gets a bit trickier is kind of like long term toxicity and like accumulation of um like exposure over time yeah and there's there's a lot of um like highly disputed um evidence on the kind of you know leaching of of plasticizers and the like from from plastics it's a very um it's a very challenging information landscape to get good data on mm-hmm. um, the the, uh, the actual toxicity of, of stuff leaching from plastics. Uh, there's a huge amount of misinformation out there, and there's a lot of like inconclusive studies. Um, there's a lot of dispute over like what um, levels of uh, stuff are present and how much is uh, actually leaching out and you yes. know, then they have the comparison of that to like people giving much higher toxic doses in animal studies it's a really complicated uh, space to actually get to the ground truth of, of what's going on with uh, that stuff i mean it's, it's almost certainly not as bad as a lot of people make it out to be but it's not entirely clear that there's a complete absence of any there there in some edge cases mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right uh, it, but yeah that's a uh, it's a tricky one and a lot of the kind of plastic um, manufacturers uh, and so on have, have borrowed the now classic playbook of the tobacco lobby and done a lot of work to um, commission studies that are that will appear legitimate but um, but there's uh, not are, uh, in fact yeah conflict of interest is yeah. not uh, mentioned yeah. about it yeah yeah and yeah, so it's uh, like even for people like us who are quite, you know, we know how the scientific literature works and all the rest of it. it it's like a huge amount of work to get to the the bottom of a lot of these questions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, hmm. it's, uh, it's kind of a big problem, uh, to be honest. This this uh, you know the the damage to the epistemic commons, uh, the to to the you know, uh, ability to. Um, come to a common understanding that's done by you know, people commissioning these kind of uh, n- not exactly fake but these like biased studies that a- appear yeah yeah uh, legitimate right it really poisons the waters of actually coming to a proper understanding of what's going on so it's uh, but yeah. it's for me it's surprising that akin like reacted so badly to it i mean like because uh, hmm. most of it um, in a way, let's if it's considering it's, let's say 1950s plastic, right? You would think it's mm. the polyvinyl chloride, um, more uh, like plastic. I would say, I would assume, okay, but it might not uh, be. I um, don't remember now. But like in terms of like um, plastic-wise, it's just a chain of um, of molecules. So I don't know how could Akin sort of taste. Um, the poison it considering like by the time he would pick it up like hmm. uh, i mean it's it's more like the um the heat treatment chemicals and that kind of stuff and the plasticizers because i mean some of those have um like heavy metal components and so on but actually true. most of this stuff is only really a problem when you burn it because that's when it gets released from being you know stuck that's, quite that's strongly what I'm bonded thinking in some about. chemical structure that's what i was yeah. going to say that like most of it is just like trapped in the like long chains of the molecules so yeah yeah unless his tongue is capable of like dissolving it or to yeah to, that to, wouldn't really make energetic sense he wouldn't yeah. be like breaking down covalent bonds in just by licking the thing yeah that's, yeah so uh, it's just like i don't know yeah i mean i think that's a little bit exaggerated but i mean it could also be the case that his you know his biology is different right so he may just be a lot more sensitive to a specific set of toxins um i mean that, you say uh, that now low concentrations you say that now now it starts me to think that maybe like this is like a prelude for future chapters that like oh plastic is toxic for the onkali we will use it mm. to make weapons uh yeah okay interesting thought <laughs> <laughs> mm. I thought I would pull your tongue, but no, you're too good for this. Um, oh, you probably don't remember. <laughs> no, no, you see, I, that, that, that's what helps me. <laughs> I don't know. I can just sound mysterious. And and, uh... <laughs> and then after the recording, it's like, oh, actually, I need to check quickly. To, um... yep. But no, honestly, <laughs> like, if it's potentially could be a prelude or something, like if they, if they find the... But Akin says that they could, the adult on Kali could easily deal with it, so it's not like um, mm-hmm. 
be difficult for them to, to remove it. But yeah, it's it's a weird response, I guess. But maybe in the same time, Octavia Butler was a massive anti-plastic uh, activist as well. And she was I mean, maybe. So <laughs> that could also be... I, mean, I think the... I don't know what it's like. I mean, I don't know what it was like in the kind of late eighties, but um, early nineties. Uh, but the um, like the environmentalist circles in California these days are like super anti-plastic. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, the kind of like fringe, um, sort of fringe environmentalist yeah, yeah. groups. Uh, you know, or you know, everything must be natural, which mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like define natural. But, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I know. And the other point that actually came up in this whole um, conversation about the the ship coming over and kind of digesting everything yeah. and the plastics not being able to uh, be broken down by it, I, I thought that it reminded me of the um, uh, the case where they found some bacteria that had evolved to digest nylon, uh-huh. uh, which was an interesting uh, thing. It was like a, uh, I think it was in mid 70s i think maybe when it was discovered it was like a, a there was a, a a pool out of water kind of outside a uh, a nylon factory in japan mm-hmm. and they happened to be like sampling bacteria from this uh from these uh pools i forget why um and they found a bacterial species that was capable of digesting the nylon because there was a lot of like waste nylon in these uh pools around the factory um and, and nylon as you said before, like a lot of these plastics are basically just you know long uh, polymers held together by um, well, it depends a lot on the type of plastic, but various bonds. In the case of nylon, it's a a peptide bond or an amide bond, very much like the the ones you have in proteins. Yeah. It's just that there's a couple extra carbons in the chain, so it's a bit longer. It doesn't quite fit into the conventional enzyme for breaking down peptide bonds because it's just a little bit bigger. Mm-hmm. But you know the uh, a mutation caused uh, an enzyme to shift enough that it could break these peptide bonds in nylon uh, and uh, you know it fit into the little groove in the enzyme and this bacteria was capable of digesting it so like we have uh, some precedent for the the capacity to, to digest certain plastics and i guess if it's if it becomes like you know if if you you could potentially modify bacteria to actually digest um digest to plant plastics even other types of ones so nowadays so mm-hmm. I, I i guess it's just a matter of time uh and i think nowadays in the news there was more like about using bacteria for the digesting plastics and stuff like that so mm-hmm. uh, i mean it, it can take a really long time it's like the um the whole thing with the so the carboniferous period and the um lack of an ability to digest lignins in trees mm-hmm. uh, that went that was the whole reason why we had that like high oxygen atmosphere and the massive foot wide dragonflies and so on because all the carbon was trapped in yeah. dead trees and then the um so it took you know multiple hundreds of thousands if not millions of years for uh, fungi to develop an enzyme that uh, digested the trees so it's you know it's a it's very much a hit and miss process <laughs> It is, we but can't, uh, I, we can't rely on it to f- solve the plastic problem well, anytime soon. Well, yes, but by the time it yeah. does, then like probably there won't be any humans anyway. So, yeah, maybe, maybe. But anyway, I guess let's go uh, finish off the chapter um, here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we finish off like, but with Gabe explained here to Akin about the plastic, um, and Akin then asked if they couldn't paint new pictures in wood or metal, but Shkak told him that it wouldn't be the same. Their own human father had a cross made of metal, but he always wore it around his neck. It was pre-war, very old. Um, Akin translated that to everyone, and they asked him if uh, independent resistors brought things for trade, to which Akin told her that, yes, yeah, sometimes they brought some stuff, sometimes they stayed and had families, and some of them stole their children. Um, mm. That put a bit of a uh, stop to the everyone and they just start walking away sort of in yeah. a shame mm-hmm. but yeah yep awkward the chapter ends with Tate showing Akin the house where he was going to sleep with a small kid side kitchen but before going she told him not to touch it even if it's cold make it a habit to stay away from it she said alright I wouldn't touch anything hot by accident though and I'm finally too old to poison so you just poison yourself no, I was careless and it hurt, but I wouldn't have gotten very sick to die. It was like when you hit your toe and stumbled on the trail. It doesn't mean uh, you don't know how to walk. You were just careless. She just she then asks if he wants to eat uh, with them or has everyone stuffed him with food. But Akin tells her that 
he told her, told her that oh, actually he will go and eat some leaves to fill his protein requirement because you know those everybody fed him, but that's not enough. She looks at him, he laughs, and then is like, "Okay, go and be ca- and be careful." And that's where the chapter ends. Hmm. Yeah, that's quite a good analogy, actually. That little uh, like stubbing your toe thing. <laughs> it just caught caught him by surprise. Hmm. hmm. Yeah, nice little. Uh... Uh, yeah, he manages to make his case very well, right? Yes. It's a, a well-argued point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, let's go maybe to my chapter 17 prediction. Mm-hmm. So I was uh, saying, uh, this is what I wrote, although Nessie wasn't present in this chapter, she'll be in this one, trying to stir shit. So uh, <laughs> that's uh, I was. Uh, yep. That's, that's what happened, yes. Mm-hmm. So yes, chapter 17. Yes, sweet Nessie is back. Um, she hasn't given up on the barbaric idea of um, cutting the tentacles of the girls. Um, she began her campaign among the salvages. Um, she said that the t- tentacles look more like slags than worms, and it would be criminal to allow those little poor girls be afflicted with such things. God, Nessie, my heart is bleeding for you as well. The girls might not might be human, uh, might be human mothers on one day, and their future ought to look human-like. Uh, I still when I read this and the way <laughs> yeah. it just blows my mind. Why? What of? And I checked, by the way, I checked the mm-hmm. definition of a psychopath, and she mm-hmm. fills that definition in some criteria. So I have full right to call her a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, honestly, I, the the more I listen to her, the more like a knife opens for me in a pocket just to try to stop her. Like, mm-hmm. but see. This is what happens, actually, when somebody more reasonable encounters Nessie. Nessie would speak to people and tell them that they are not on Kali, so nothing would happen like Gabe and Tate have been telling about, specifically about the poisoning of the human when they heard the on Kali. That's what they meant. Mm-hmm. Abira, on the other hand, who was being spoken to, told her that she will finish her if the girls don't. That's what yeah, normally... That's the, the, yeah, that, that's the appropriate response, uh, Yes, exactly. That's the normal adult response. Other people were more receptive to what Nessie was talking about. A pair of salvages named San, surnamed San, Gilbert and Anne. Uh, we are told there are a couple from Switzerland that were in Kenya at the time of fo- uh, the bombs falling, who also mm. tried to convince Tori, uh, um, sorry, not Yori Shinizu uh, and Sabina Dobrovsky. Um, Sabina we've met earlier in the chapter, in the previous chapter. Mm. Spe- especially Yori, who was their doctor. Gilbert um, was trying to persuade her by telling her that the tentacles, you know, it's not about the appearance is not important, it's about what they represent. They are alien, unhuman. You know, Yori then asked about Akin and his tongue, you know, but, like, should we cut it off as well? I mean, they were like, no, but Anne told her that the boy will have to be taught not to put things in the mouth and not to taste people. It's disgusting in her opinion. Akin knew Anne because the painted, uh, she painted pictures of animals that, you know, when she was from Africa and already shown him some of her work. And Nessie blamed Tate for letting him give in to his alien impulses because she had no children before, so she was spoiling him. But Akin is young. He could mm-hmm. learn to love other people uh, other than Tate. Mm-hmm. Uh, when Yori argued that, you know, Tate is, you know, that he loves Tate. But at that point, Yori was like still sure, wasn't sure about the whole procedure. But Nessie tells her that it should be done, so because you know she should study them, and you know, it's just like holy shit, wow, lady, <laughs> yeah. give her a break. There's, there's there's a quote from from her, and so she says, "It must be done. We must raise human children, not aliens, who don't even understand how we see things." And uh, yeah, that's uh, she's really pushing this uh, with everyone. She won't let it drop. Yeah. As, uh, yeah, as was you know, already foreshadowed, well, pretty much explicitly told. Yeah, um, and yeah, it's it's interesting that uh, that Yori is even kind of uh, humoring her as much as uh, uh, as much as she is. Yeah, it's re- but uh, that changes now because Yori tells her that she now already knows that they're venomous and it's a cosmetic surgery, unnecessary in fact, and she's not a surgeon anyway. Mm. And why would she risk girls' health just because of what amounts of an uh, of an ugly birth, ugly birthmark? And this basically what she said makes her realize that no, she won't do it, and she just leaves them. Like says good night, and nobody responds, and she just leaves. 
But our sweet Nessie mm-hmm. is not giving up, and that would put, that she, she says she would put gloves on for protection and give the girls some liquor, and with sharp knife it could be done tomorrow morning when they're feeding. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh dear. Oh, That's uh... God. <sighs> yeah, very worrying. And, and the she's kind of uh, there's an interesting sort of uh, like throughout this whole section with um, the other people that that uh, Nessie's trying to talk into. Uh, doing this uh, where there's a lot of kind of hesitancy w- with like ellipses and sentences and, and she's like cutting people off for you know just a quote that ends in a dash where she's like interrupting yeah um and uh, I think there's there's one uh, one uh, guy Gilbert Gill um who is kind of hesitant but he's sort of volunteered himself to be the one who actually does, does the cutting. cutting and it's like yeah. Uh, he, yeah, uh, he mm-hmm. says I can do it, but there's still little girls and then she's like, No, don't worry, it'll be they won't know. But the thing is the fact that she wants to one, get the girls drunk in the form of an mm. anesthetic, which is absolutely does not gonna work the way she thinks it's going to work. Um yes. because so the, the pain is gonna immediately the adrenaline shot is going to going through the body is gonna immediately like sober them up temporarily. That's uh, that's for yeah, sure. It's not a great anesthetic, and also uh, it, it marginally reduces the effectiveness of clotting. Um, I think slightly more so in women than men. I but the thing um, is, using alcohol but, for like any like um, clearing wounds or like be like um, during uh, like cleaning wounds and stuff like that is really bad because one, it really stops and um, the, it could kill the bacteria, but the concentration in the alcohols usually are not high enough. They have to be at least mm. seven. They have to be around seventy percent to actually be of any use to actually kill bacteria. Yeah. But at the same time, they'll kill the healthy cells that are kicking in the um, how do you call it the the uh, repair mechanism in the in the wound. And two, they'll cause mm. scarring, and it's just messes up the wound a lot. And it just makes it usually if like if it's not strong al- enough alcohol, like it has to be seventy percent uh, ethanol, like seventy percent strong. Mm then the wound is going to be like festering and it's just going to be really bad. Yeah, that's not, not going to help you uh, disinfect it. Uh, so, yeah, that's like... But I suppose this is not necessarily... Yeah, uh, the, using it as an anesthetic is not a good idea. Using it as as a, a, an antiseptic is, is not a good idea unless it's 70% proof and you've got nothing else. Yeah. It's, yeah, uh, oh dear. Uh, to be fair, yeah. like it's, I mean, nowadays, because in a long time, the you know, using things like hydrogen per- hydrogen peroxide, at least in Poland when I was a kid, mm. was like a mm-hmm. thing to like clean your wounds because, but that really slowed down the process of healing. Nowadays, you can get really nice um, uh, chemicals that like clear the wounds, but they don't stop the affect the. Uh, the process of healing so it's good to always mm-hmm. if in case you're on a, any trail or anything keep those in just in case because even a small cut can really be um, dangerous as you know we told this story before about penicillin and the guy the first oh, guy yeah, who yeah. got you know who was administered penicillin there was enough for him and what he did was just cut himself on the on the spike from a rose that caused him to have you know have a infection and then death so yeah. leading to death that led to death so it's good to have things like that but don't use alcohol for the love of god <laughs> really don't <laughs> there are uh, much better options yes and you will make it worse <laughs> if you use it as an anesthetic <laughs> exactly <laughs> but yeah so we are at this point where Akin is literally hearing all of that what there, what's happening you know between Nessie Gilbert and Anne and Yori and um, he immediately gets out of the hammock he was sharing with Abira and uh, goes to get Amesh card. And as, as he's doing that, he actually meets them also on the way going towards him. And they all link and immediately speak without sound. And the girls realize that they really need to go. And even though Akin was trying to persuade them not to, considering that there are still more people against Nessie, um, the, girl would try, uh, the girl would try again and recruit more people later on. Hmm. And here's an excerpt from a book. Tate could talk to her salvages and the way she talked to the cam on the way up here. People believe her when she talks. Nessie didn't. Yes, she did. She just wants to have everything her way, even if her way is wrong. And she's not very smart. She's seen me taste metal and flesh and wood, but she still she thinks gloves will protect her hands from being tasted or stung when she cuts you. Yeah. Um, 
not uh, connecting the dots there. <laughs> yeah, well, basically, the lady is too f- um, focused on the whole idea of doing something without actually mm-hmm. rethinking about it. But anyway, the chapter ends here with the girls deciding to go and Akin asking them to let him join, but only be- being greeted with silence. The girls then very gently put him between them and slowly force him to go to sleep. And even though Akin initially resists angrily, he realizes that they wouldn't have a chance to escape because one, he was smaller than they were, and two, they had much better connection and conversation and the reaction to get worse faster. And basically the chapter ends with him being forced to sleep and him falling falling off... uh, to the land of dreams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I think it's it's quite interesting the way that he uh, the last little interaction there, um, reading a little bit from it. He knew this. They could feel his contradictory feelings. They knew he knew. Thus, there was no need to argue. He must simply accept the reality. Right? So he, they can tell that uh, you know he's conflicted about leaving with them but that he knows that he will be you know a, a, a burden to them yeah. if they try and flee right Absolutely. probably make it so that they get caught uh and yeah i thought this is an interesting little uh, aspect of the way that the owen carly interact with one another because they have this kind of much more like direct ability to perceive one another's um not so much thought, but like physiological responses to stuff. So yeah. they can tell that there's kind of an emotional, like I, I want to be with you, but uh, they they uh, it make, makes it kind of harder for the Owen Carly to sort of justify an emotional decision to one another because they 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 have a uh, more direct awareness of what they're what one another are feeling. Yes. So like it, it, we we know that you're making this as an emotional decision, not an intellectual one, and you know that this is the the case. Yeah. So like uh, it, uh, you know, Akin has to sort of just like uh, concede to that, uh, and so uh, and he does. And yeah. to be honest, he, like it makes sense. Like the girls will survive mm-hmm. longer um, if they don't if Akin doesn't join them. But yeah, feel for yep. the boy because. Hmm. He is being left behind, um, but yeah. Yep, stuck with all the humans alone again. Yeah, with Nessie breathing above his still there, very like creepily behind his neck. He's like, okay, where are the girls? <laughs> yeah, I just uh, gotta worry that she's not going to decide she wants to cut your tongue out. God, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, to be fair, like, I, I understand, mm. like, her husband, uh, like, probably loves her still, but God, I'll be like, oof, this girl has to, either has to stop or she needs to be stopped at this point. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, not a way of thinking that can be uh, productively kept around. Absolutely. But mm. I guess, I mean, I, I understand her um, uh, desperate you know how why she's so desperate and i understand like i agree with her uh we must raise human children not aliens who don't understand how we see things and i think that's the whole purpose of akin being between the humans because he already realized that human needs the third like version of them the human agjai tribe where like mm-hmm. there's just humans that can like this you know like this is supposed to be trade not full assimilation and that's i th- yeah yeah and I, f- I guess it's just sort of a, um, you know, a, a pathological manifestation of the absence of that option, yes. right? The, yes. the, the, it's just a sort of a, a very illogical response to trying to make a, a reality that's completely inaccessible to them happen, right? Uh, d- despite the fact that you know they, they can't, you know, they, they, it makes. No sense, as we've said many times before, to take these like hybrid Owen Carly human children and try and have them be the human line. They're they're not human. Yeah, right? it's it, they're, they're they're the hybrids. It's, it doesn't work in the way that the resistors are, are like stating they want it to work. So it's. Uh, but the thing is, yeah, they're kind of stuck between that like ideological commitment and 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 the this sort of unattainable reality is i absolutely agree but the thing is like i feel in the same time about you know there's a reason why on kali are doing it this way not another and they've explained Mm. it many times because the way humans are like if you imagine a situation where the the humans are allowed to have the 
just humans and you know you know have children between just humans right um eventually you know like they would rebuild they would redo their science everybody would like sort of origin and eventually somebody would raise another war against the onkali right and the onkali human hybrids and the humans that's probably yeah yeah uh, i think this is where um like there's some uh the kind of we know best attitude of the onkali i think is one of the more um uh, sort of prominent aspects of the uh, kind of commentary on colonialism in this mm-hmm. whole uh, series, yeah. right? Because it's the the, the Oankali are coming to the you know the, the native population of humans and saying we know best, like you shouldn't be doing it this way. This is not the a, a sensible way of doing things. Um, and there's an element in which they're right, but there's an element in which they're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it is the uh, as is as is usually the case, right? Uh, when when the colonial powers of, of uh, Europe were you know, taking over the rest of the world, like they had some useful things like modern medicine, but they also had some very problematic attitudes towards things like you know uh, the the uh, like native religious and cultural practices yeah. that were uh, you know uh, of uh, like neutral moral content right no absolutely so a, but in this case yeah. though i agree with don kali because it would it will happen like if you allow humans to like mm. rebuild it's going to be a full-on war eventually like th- that there is be always those people who are um un- i suppose not inevitably right not uh, inevitably it, it could, but I mean, eventually like it's I mean, it it does seem likely that there would be at least some conflict, right? You'd probably have some kind of extremist faction that would be against them, but it doesn't necessarily entail that they're like the mainstream of the the sort of um, independent human civilization would want to go to war with the Owen Kali. Uh, it's, I mean, um, for starters, they like the they would probably be pragmatic enough to realize that's not a fight they're likely to win, uh, but. Well, but still, I feel like often... It, it, yeah, it, it, it's still a risk that the Owen Kali yeah. would be taking to let that, that possibility develop, so... Well, yeah, mm. I I just feel like this this, this would be in, like, this, this situation with... Akin is right to to calm the humans down, but then again, I don't know if this book is going to have this happy ending for everyone. Knowing that Octavia Butler used to write really bad endings <laughs> and then had to rewrite them, so well, I don't know if it was necessarily always the endings, but like, yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> just just in general, she had to, uh, you know, make it a bit more up, as uh, as <laughs> phrase, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, I think that uh, uh, that probably wraps us up for these. Yeah, two I guess so. So I guess let's go to yeah. my chapter eighteen prediction. Um, yes. So I, th- oh, this is obvious. Like the village wakes up, and they find Akin fo- on asleep on the floor, and the girl's gone, and they're like, "What the hell is going on?" And then, of course, it's gonna be a massive search party of to find, and of course, uh, Akin's gonna be like, "Yeah, they gone because we heard, we all heard that Nessie was basically planning to scalp them." Uh, and yeah, that's that's gonna be a fun conversation with Nessie and uh, the rest. Of the people, yeah, yeah. So, uh, hmm, how do you think the uh, um, Tate and, and Gabriel will will react to uh, the the news, as it were, that, that uh, Nessie and, and Gil were were planning on uh, going through with this? Uh, I I don't know. I mean, like Tate obviously would be like, "You bloody idiot." Gabe is going to be like, "I get you, but you're an idiot." Uh, sort of attitude, but um, I I feel like you know it's. So probably no serious ramifications? I don't know. I don't know. Because, I mean, there's already a shortage of humans as is. And if they're like, there would be any repercussions, any serious repercussions that deserve to be, like she deserves to have any serious repercussions, then um, it would mean that, you know, she would have to go to jail. But I don't think they have a jail as such. And she mm-hmm. would still be, yeah. ya- you know, ya- yammering around still about the Onkali and you know, stuff like that. So... I don't know if there's gonna be any repercussion as such, but like, uh, it, I, I'm sure it's not. It's not gonna put the people like. I'm sure she's done this before, and she like people be like, oh well, type of attitude. I mean, the, the construct children are like 
considered very valuable so she's kind of just lost to him yeah i don't know i it might be like there might be something they're like um happening to her but maybe not i think there might be like concern like wondering like why akin didn't go with them right and they're like why didn't take akin and maybe that be um um uh, okay yeah mm. that's an interesting point right it throws suspicion on him because he didn't leave with yeah them. so they might be asking like somebody might ask him why why didn't he leave and be like oh yeah because i'm not fast enough and too small to, to to join them they were better off to go by themselves mm. sounds like an excuse yeah it does sound like an excuse <laughs> to start slow down the the search but still it's um yeah it is what it is uh, but I don't know. I honestly, I don't know what. How technically, if if I was in position of like Tate and Gabe, I would be like, a few slaps in the face would be enough uh, for what she was doing. I would literally, you know, like, I would send her to like a <laughs> uh, some sort of mine or something, just live a pickaxe and like keep going for what for what you did. Um, <laughs> okay, some hard labor. <laughs> basically, like good old hard labor mm-hmm. to uh, work her problems out of her head because she has too much time on her hands to be thinking things that she did. But hey, that's an interesting point. Actually, we don't really know if they have any kind of like criminal justice infrastructure. Yeah, it, it's, it, it doesn't seem like it. It doesn't yeah. explain like because they said like there's not like there's there so wasn't supposed to be any guns in the vi- in the village in the town of Phoenix, mm. and yet they after those. The group that brought Akin that was killed, the guns were taken with them. Uh, they took their guns um, to the salvage site. Now we know they're mm. like probably people are too busy to surviving to to do anything. But like, I don't know if there's any such justice. Like probably more of like assembly style style of justice where people like discuss what whatever the person did and then just you know like whatever punishments like get out of the village, never tower town, never come back or type of stuff. Mm-hmm. maybe if it's like very serious punishment and we still don't know anything about the um owen Kali's administration as it were no like how they organize politically what how they make decisions collectively no, uh, we don't know anything it, 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 rem- it remains a, a mystery to us absolutely we have no yeah. clue what's what's the actual like mm. but yeah but you know they do always seem to be making fairly coherent decisions, right? They 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 yes, act sort of, yeah. with unity, but uh, we've not yet seen the mechanism of that uh, of of coming to that collective decision. Yeah, we we are not told. Like we know that there's like collective um, discussion, but like probably through you know everybody just having a massive circle and then just standing in massive circle and just like telepathically discussing it but probably we don't know anything mm-hmm. maybe maybe at some point when uh we go uh to the ship back on the ship maybe we'll be maybe, maybe we'll be maybe we'll be told something but i don't know maybe i'm asking leading questions maybe i'm just misdirected <laughs> maybe you are <laughs> <laughs> yeah but anyway, I guess that's that's it for today. Um, yes. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. We're Xenothesis. You can find all the places we upload our podcast on xenothesis.com. I was Michael Glinka. I was Richard Acton. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye.